so in my in this meetings we will be having uh, i will be presenting a uh, i titled this these meetings what is this thing called science and this is a uh, the title of a famous book by alan chalmers uh, which presented a an overview of uh, different philosophies of science uh, in the course of the 20th century. And that is more or less my aim in these meetings, to present an overview of the different uh, ways in which our current understanding uh, from the philosophical point of view of the scientific enterprise has evolved through the 20th century. And what is now the uh, way we, uh, let's say, uh, understand uh, the scientific enterprise. So we'll start off uh, at the very beginning of the 20th century. Uh, in 1933, Karl Popper, who will be one of the uh, main figures I will be talking about in these in this, uh, uh, hours we will, have, we will spend together, uh, Karl Popper wrote, was working on, on what would eventually become his most famous book, the Logique der Forschung, uh, published in 1935, which was later translated in 1959 into English as The Logic of Scientific Discovery. He was writing on a preliminary draft of this book, and he wrote a letter to a, a famous scholar, a famous historian of philosophy of the time, Egon Friedel. He was a famous scholar or, of Novalis, uh, shouldn't surprise that uh, shouldn't be surprising that Popper actually wrote, who was actually working on a book in the philosophy of science, wrote a letter to a famous scholar of a romantic philosopher because Novalis was very much read by uh, by uh, Popper himself, who actually uses a quote from Novalis at the beginning of the Logic of Scientific Discovery. Anyway, he wrote this letter and described the work he was doing uh, with this, uh, in this way. Uh, my book is a child of its time. That is a child of crisis, which is essentially a crisis in physics. Um, as I was saying, so Popper wrote this letter describing his own work as a child of its time, that is a child of crisis, which was, he said, a crisis in, physically, in physics uh, mostly. And indeed, the 20th century opens uh, uh, with a, what, uh, what is usually referred to uh, by historians as the second scientific revolution. The first scientific revolution is the one with the capital initials uh, uh, was the Copernican revolution uh, took place uh, more or less so to say uh, between 1543 the date of publication of Copernicus de revolutionibus on the revolution of, he of heavenly spheres which basically triggered the revolution and ended uh, once again more or less uh, approximately in 1687 with the publication, the first edition of Newton's Principia, that basically summarized and presented in a new perspective all the results uh, achieved by Copernicus himself, Galileo, Kepler, and many others. Offering a new paradigm, as Thomas Kuhn would say, uh, or, or for science that would last until exactly uh, the beginning uh, of the 20th century or the turn of the 20th century, when a second scientific revolution, so-called, uh, took place. Uh, in 1900, Max Planck introduced the hypothesis that energy is not transmitted in a continuous way, but in small packets, uh, small quantities. Uh, and this was the idea of uh, quanta. Uh, this gave rise to the works of Einstein's and others, such as uh, Einstein's Bohr, uh, I'm sorry, Heisenberg, Bohr, Pauli, and uh, uh, Dirac, and many others, Le Broglie, uh, to the uh, to quantum uh, physics. And this was a major turn 
in the uh, our in our picture of uh, of uh, uh, science and of physics in particular. Another contribution that uh, that um, that caused the, this second scientific revolution is Einstein's theory of relativity, of course, special relativity first 1905 and general relativity 1915-16. Uh, actually providing a new theory of gravitation that replaced Newton's own theory as offered in the Principia, uh, first published, as I said, in 1687. Then there was a, a crisis uh, in regarding the foundations of mathematics. At the end of the 19th century, Bertrand Russell uh, came up with an antinomy or paradox that led to the collapse of Frege's attempt to provide mathematics with a logical uh, structure. And in the 1930-1931, Kurt Gödel and his incompleteness theorem uh, challenged the very, um, so to say, uh, nature of mathematics itself. Plus to all this was the long way of Darwin's theory. Uh, Darwin's Origin of Species was published in uh, 1859, but its consequences were uh, took, uh, took several years, several decades to be uh, fully acknowledged. And so we, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was still the long way of Darwin's uh, revolutionary uh, theory of evolution. And then of course, uh, in 1899, uh, on a completely different field, there was a publication. We had the publication of uh, Sigmund Freud, the, the Traumdeutung, that is the interpretation of dreams, which again stirred a, a revolution in its own field. So this is uh, just a list, a brief and quick list of all various elements that contributed to this huge change in our understanding of the world and of the place of man within the world uh, that occurred at the turn of the century. This is what happens in the sciences. From the philosophical point of view, and that's what we are concerned with, uh, the problem was how to react. How do we cope with this new revolution? After the Newtonian or Copernican revolution, uh, philosophers of science um, were more or less certain that the model or the structure of science as presented by Newton in the Principian in subsequent works by other, uh, other um, scholars would eventually last more or less forever. This was the definitive picture, so to say. Still at the turn of the 20th century, the whole edifice Newton had, had constructed collapsed. So the problem pro, from the philosophical point of view is how to react to this collapse, how to build a new edifice for science on firmer grounds or on more solid grounds. Hmm? How do we come up with these new foundations for scientific knowledge so as to prevent the collapse of the edifice of science in the future as well. This was the philosophical problem, the epistemological problem uh, with which the 20th century opened. 